Thank you, Dr. Trehan. I am wanting to capture your impression because you were the first one to bring Da Vinci to India in cardiac surgery. I want to get you back to that moment when you made a decision on a technology which was so nascent that nobody knew, even the company did not know where would it go. Starting in 1994, I had already moved back to India from the US. There were 12 of us who were at a meeting and we were discussing the fact that although coronary bypass surgery was far superior for revascularization than stenting at that time, patients were always preferring that if we could do that surgery with less invasion with less pain, less recovery period, that then they would prefer surgery over stenting. So this was a discussion that we had at our meeting. And then that's when we decided to found what we uh, named as the International Society of Minimal Invasive Cardiac Surgery. So it started at that time. And this group started working together on ways and means of trying to do the Min minimal invasive approaches. At the same time, uh, Mr. Wang from uh, Computer Motion and Lonnie Smith from Intuitive Technology also approached us knowing about the fact that we had intense interest in developing minimal invasive techniques. So we worked with them in Mount View. Intuitive was in Mount View at that time and Computer Motion was in Santa Barbara. So some of our faculty, members of our group, would shuttle between the two, trying to help them to actually and give them feedback into how to develop the technology further for our use. So, so over a period of time, the next three, four years, it became mature enough that you could actually implement it in doing procedures even as delicate as coronary bypass surgery. So that's when I, because I was still, uh, had gotten into the whole concept at the ground floor and I was very familiar with the, uh, the intuitive people and what had happened was that they actually, uh, the computer motion merged with them so that their combined technology was quite very good and very effective at that time. So we, the reason why I, uh, I actually brought in the first robot into India was the fact that we were doing coronary bypass surgery in and you could see the big difference between a, 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 a 10 inch, 12 inch incision in the middle of the chest as opposed to four little portholes. And the patients would be actually going, going home three, four days later. So there was a big major difference happening. Now what the limitation that became for cardiac surgery was that we had to arrest the heart, that is fine. But at the same time, we could do the anterior wall and the lateral wall very easily, but there was no instrumentation to actually get to the inferior wall or the posterior wall of the heart. And that's why it, it had limited application in limited number of patients. Simultaneously, we started doing beating heart surgery. So that was also a very uh, sort of big step forward in the sense that you, the trauma of a uh, cardiopulmonary bypass was actually eliminated so that the recovery periods became better. But then we still were either doing it through small incisions on the left side of the chest, like, like we described the last operation, and also then started doing valves through minimal invasive surgery on the anterior wall on the right side. So this whole development was going on, and in the meantime, the other specialties who were associated with us at, at, at our institution where we brought it, that they found it much more convenient and, and favorable to the patient to do certain urological procedures. So prostate, which was normally required a large pr procedure, especially rad radical prostatectomy, that was developed by our urologists, not only in India, but around the world. And they started utilizing. So the applicability of other procedures where surgeons could actually do colonic resection uh, and, uh, and gynecology people could use for it for, for their uterine uh, uh, you know, procedures, that actually gathered momentum. So 
Any anything special that came out of it? Uh, the fact is that we have a full fledged institute with all the super specialties that are performing the, on full steam. One definite thing that came out is we need another robot. <laughs> you know it's not on the way already. <laughs> and I think at that time, the company also, which was actually under severe strain when they first started, uh, that they found it very convenient to encourage the sales to these subspecialties. And also the instrumentation was refined, more oriented towards them. We, as, as a group of cardiac surgeons, were sewing freehand and quite very successfully. It was, it was good, but the limitation, as I said, was, was still there. And then the stabilizers were developed, but it became very difficult to do beating heart surgery through the, uh, through the portholes with the absence of adequate instrumentation. So that's why valves took off. We could replace mitral valves, we could uh, do even aortic valves, we could do ASDs, VSD closures, and that always gathered momentum. But Coronary bypass surgery, which is now the, in, in our field the, the maximum number of surgeries done, was, was difficult in the sense of in the absence of proper stabilizers and rotators. So that also is happening and uh, we, the journey has been very favorable because if you look at it, in all specialties, including our cardiac, like thymectomies and, and lung procedures and all, we are doing still uh, and we have now actually developed, our group has developed robotic kidney transplant and you can see the visible difference from the accuracy of the work done and also the relief for the patient because it's like they are ready to go home two days later, there is not a big scar anyway for the donor and stuff like that. So there is an obvious great spin-off and uh, like I said, robotic thymectomies instead of doing uh, mid stenotomies or large thoracotomies to, to do it. You can do it much more accurately with the robot. So it is a growing field. The d more and more specialties like our head and neck surgeons, they, are, they do th uh, thyroidectomies with the, with the robot. We have uh, the, I mean, it's a separate robot, but for, for eye surgery, that's also, so the whole robotics field has taken a very major portion of our attention right now. Of course, with the development of AI, and VR and all that, there is there's also more and more potential. So I'm sure that with the new, new uh, uh, technology that is there, that we should be able to do many more cardiac surgeries in many more centers in the near future. So that is why we, there are many new technologies in the sense of the sealants and the, and the staples and all the stuff which is coming to, to bear and the cost is also coming down. So given that, many other companies have gotten into robotics and there are many versions of it. But the, the lead time that Intuitive has on all these it still makes it a preferred, preferred uh, robot uh, in spite of the cost for it. So the history of uh, Medanta Vatikuti Foundation and this whole effort that we are making around the country goes back to uh, the fact that we established Medanta and then I have been in, the, in with the usage of robotics for the last 10 years. And so we had brought the, uh, bought the robot for Medanta also because in the meantime, we started doing urology, prostatectomies, and gynecology, and some of the other specialties, including cardiac. So we were using it, and our friendship with uh, Dr. Mani Menon and uh, Mr. Mahindra Bhandari, we thought that maybe we should do a joint effort to establish the usage of robotic surgery for the benefit of the patients across the country. And that's how Medanta Vatikuti Foundation came into being. And now uh, the efforts made by the Vatikuti Foundation by establishing three, four other places has been quite uh, successful. And I think that over a period of time, more and more centers will come online and we shall be able to enhance together the usage of robotics. So putting together the whole journey after we got bought the robot here, we had a conference which we call Minimal Invasive Surgery Conference, which we, we started this whole concept of the winter session. So India was the first one to actually start it. We started it. And 
Then what, what happened at that, we demonstrated with our, our faculty, which included uh, from Germany, and DDR from Belgium, and many other surgeons who came and did different procedures and demonstrated the feasibility of doing minimal invasive procedures with the assistance of the robot. So that really actually put the step forward. But now if you see, because the interest is, has, is still there and the other specialties overtook us. So now there has been a lot of proliferation around the world of the, of the of robots. And like I said, dominated, dominated by intuitive, where more and more surgeons have started doing other specialties. So it's very heartening to see that all this on one hand is an excitement for surgeons because it, we, we can deliver care at a, at a very uh, a sort of non-invasive manner. But you look at the beneficiary of the patient. The patients are the ones who have really benefited from advancement in this technology. And I think the future is even, I mean, this, we are just scratching the surface. I think the future will see many, many more procedures being done robotically because the advantages are obvious. Like we, de, we do live donor uh, uh, liver transplants and the donor hepatectomy used to require a full, full incision across the abdomen. Now they can do it through four portholes. And, and it's, been, it's been very successful and it's become a routine. And they want more and more time, so we are buying more and more robots now. So my belief is that this technology took time to, to find its roots, but today it has made a huge contribution to medicine. Thank you.